So good evening. That was Alan Watts. Did you recognize I do. the voice? Yes. Julie listens to him a lot. So good evening and welcome to Wednesday's Wisdom. My name is Judy Chapman. I am the assistant minister here at the center. And I am so delighted that you're here tonight. It's going to be so much fun. I had a special surprise tonight. My, both of my daughters showed up and are here to hear all my wisdom. I'm just thrilled. And most of it I got that from them <laughs> and my mom. <clears throat> so whoever you are, whatever path you're on, you are certainly welcome here. Okay. Got it. I got it. So tonight our uh, practitioner is Jill Burnett, and she is available after the service for about 15 minutes. If you so choose to have a short session with her, for an affirmative prayer. So if everything is going great in your life, you can still talk to her and just see that everything will continue to go that way because she will see the truth of you and, and what is within you and the God that is within you. And if some, you're having some mental blocks or some obstacles in your life, she is available for you to help remove those from your consciousness. So she will um, start the evening with an affirmative prayer, but first of all, we're going to do a chant, and tonight it is the face of God. So after the first couple times that we chant it, I would like you to stand up and look at the person next to you and sing those words to them, and then just switch around until it's done. Okay, you can start, Gina. You are the face of God. 
Hello? There we go. As we stay in that space, knowing that we are one, one with God, this is what I know. I know that we are one with the one, that one power, that one presence, that one infinite source, which is God. I know that we are not just the face of God, but God is in, around, and through each and every one of us. I know for tonight that just as the rain has changed our weather, we can change as well. The change is easy and breezy. It is that perfection that is with each and every person here. I know for each and every one of you, Tonight reveals something special to help you get to that place that you want to be. I know for each and every one of you there is perfection, wholeness, abundance. I know that everyone gets exactly what they want. And with this in mind, I give great thanks. Knowing that this is so, I release it into the law, and so it is. And so it is. <clears throat> I'm going to try to read this. Do your, Jill, yes. do your demonstration. Oh, my demonstration. Um, it's funny because I took practitioner training, what, three years ago, I guess it was? I don't remember. But I had to take a class to renew my practitioner's license. And when I was taking this class, I ran on to something that I had written down when I was in practitioner training about finding the house of my dreams. Now, for some of you, you don't know this, or maybe you do, but probably about 11 years ago, I lost everything. I was down to about $100. And I was making very good money before that. But I went through a divorce, and it was devastating. And I really didn't know that I'd ever own a home again. So I put that out there to the universe. And I wanted to buy in Laguna Woods. <clears throat> now, I'm a realtor, and I know it's very difficult to get in there because of all their qualifications financially. So I found the house, and a friend of mine that's a client says, you know, I thought you were going to buy in Laguna Woods. And I said, well, I just don't have the qualifications. He goes, well, we'll solve that. I'll just drop the money in your bank account. Boom, house was done, 30 days closed. So it was funny to run onto that little piece of paper about wanting something and then having it manifest. And I, I bought it about a year and a half ago, so. It's pretty dark up here. Okay. This comes out of the Science of Mind magazine. Put the lights and up, Gina. for those of you who um, read this, it's a great thing. It comes out monthly. It has wonderful things in there. Oh, yay. Light. Let there be light. And this is about what we believe. We believe in God, the living spirit, the absolute, the self-existent cause, the one manifestation itself in through all creation. But it is not absorbed by the creation. The manifestation universe is the body of God. It is the logic and the necessary outcome of infinite knowledge, knowingness of God. We believe in the individualization of spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of one spirit. We believe this, we believe in the eternity, we believe in eternity and immortality and the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. We believe in the ultimate goal of life to be complete freedom from all discord of every nature and that this goal is sure to be obtained by all. We believe in unity of all life and that the highest God and innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature 
and that anyone may become a revealer of the truth who lives in close contact with this indwelling of God. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through the universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and, act, and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of the sick and control of conditions through the power of mind. We believe in internal goodness, the internal loving kindness, and the internal givingness of life of all. Of life to all, should I say. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, our own destiny, for we understand that the life of all is God. Next is Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> Everybody. Well, good evening. good evening. I'm thrilled to be here tonight, as I am every Wednesday night, but especially thrilled because I get to speak tonight. I usually don't book myself. <laughs> so, um, so when you saw what I was talking about tonight, the sci what is the science of mind, I would bet you thought, oh my God, that again, because... That's what we do. We talk about the science of mind. And the same subject every Wednesday, every Sunday, every class, all said in a little bit different way. So it's a little bit of a variety, but it's all the science of mind. Uh, when, I was, um, when I was in ministerial training, I heard a lecture by uh, Raymond Charles Barker. And it was a recording. And he was in New York speaking to over a 1,000 people. And uh, in the middle of his lecture, he said, I've been doing these lectures for 10 years, and I just got it. Wow. It just, I just got it today. And so I was thinking, well, that's OK that he just got it after being one of the biggies. He was a biggie in the science of mind new thought movement, then I'm, I'm okay if I don't get it right away <clears throat> after practitioner class, you know. Um, so repetition is so valuable for us. So I pulled up some quotes on repetition because we hear the same things over and over and over again, but we are in a different place over and over and over again. Today, I'm not in the same place as I was 10 years ago, thank God. And, um, and I'm not even going to be in the same place in a week from now. So here's some quotes on repetition. Groucho Marx said this, if you've heard this story before, don't stop me because I'd like to hear it again. <laughs> uh, a Latin proverb, repetition is the mother of study. Tony Robbins said, repetition is the mother of all skill. And I like this one, Muhammad Ali. The repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to change in your life. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> Here's another one. There was always more to be found in exploring the same subject again and again and again. These are repetitious words and phrases. These repetitious words and phrases are merely methods of convincing the subconscious mind. So that's what we do with our affirmations. We're convincing ourselves, we're acting as if. <clears throat> Dale Carnegie said, tell the audience what you're going to say, say it, and then tell them what you've already said. So that, he's a fabulous speaker. 
Um, there's another one. Constant repetition carries conviction. There is no substitute for attentive repetition. And my last one and my favorite one. Repetition is important in the training, not only of animals, but also of humans. <laughs> so tonight, you will be trained by repetition. Repetition of the video, repetition of what we learn all the time in classes, at our center here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was blessed to be brought up in new thought. I attended the Church of Truth in Pasadena, which was a unity church uh, since birth. I attended that with my parents and my brother. And I didn't have any preconceived notions of what God was. Um, I knew that at 10 years old that I created what I um, visualized. Because in my Sunday school class, we visualized, had a visual uh, treasure board, and I put up pictures of all different kinds of horses because I wanted a horse so bad. But you see, we lived in Azusa in a little um, track home with a very small backyard and no room for a horse. But you know, but I didn't care. I visualized on my treasure board this horse. We happened to move to Glendora with five acres when I was 12 and I got a horse for my birthday. So it was like Raymond Charles Barker. I got it. I got it. This stuff really does work. <clears throat> so I create, could create my life most of the time with my conscious mind. But then with my unconscious mind, it created itself from what was ever beliefs or practices I had in my subjective mind. So every morning, every Sunday morning here, we recite and repeat the Declaration of Principles. And it starts out with, I believe. It starts out with, God, where am I? Um, I believe in God. So on Sunday morning, when you say that, I believe in God, what image comes to your mind? Now, I know that if you were brought up in a fundamental, um, traditional uh, religious faith, that maybe sometimes you're visualizing an um, older man with a long white beard, maybe, kind of like Santa Claus, but not really, um, <clears throat> but giving the same kind of things, you know, goodness, uh, but that he... He is in the sky, and then there is also the devil, or Satan, which is in hell below you. Very separate from who you are. God, Satan. I never had that concept, being a new thought person all my life. So people that do have that concept, and would like to change their belief on that, sometimes it's very difficult. It's very difficult to get that image out of their head because, you know, you were taught, some people, in different religious beliefs, uh, that God is a, a judgmental God because you're a sinner. Uh, God watches everything that you do. God knows every thought you, you're thinking whether it's good or bad. And you have an angry God sometimes. My God, my personal God was never like that. I have a God of love. Dr. Holmes says that today is the day when we awake from our dream of separation. Today, I am alive, awake, and aware. Please say that with me. 
Today, I am alive, awake, and aware. Again, I want to hear you. Today, I am alive, awake, and aware. He also says an enlightenment is freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from worry, freedom from concern, freedom from all those things that make you worry all night long. Freedom from that. So I uh, grew up in a, a, a perfect home, I am happy to say. Uh, I have no complaints at all. But, but um, then I got married and got divorced, and, and uh, I started subconscious, my subconscious mind, I started creating a hell to live in. And for several years, I pretty much lived in hell. The unfortunate thing was is I brought my two darling daughters with me into that hell. And um, over the years, um, they have forgiven me. It, they forgive me long before I could forgive myself. But when I was in ministerial training, I could not move forward until I forgave myself. And I let go of the guilt I let go of the shame, I let go of the blame, because it was the 70s and it was drugs, sex, and rock and roll. You know, what can I say? That's the old, that's what it was back then. And uh, so I, I finally, after years, could forgive myself. So we have a great relationship now, and mostly, uh, and we <laughs> moved forward. <laughs> and my mom's sitting there cringing, going, please don't talk about Please don't talk about that. So we can create heaven or we can create hell right here on earth because this is where it's at. It's not out there. There's no greater later. It's all happening in this moment right here and right now. And how we respond and how we react to our life's situation brings us heaven or hell. Yesterday I reacted to a situation with my granddaughter and I was in hell. And my daughter was in hell. And uh, we both felt it. I mean, it goes right through the body. It comes out in a physical sense. And um, I had to remind myself that my reaction to something or my my response to something is how, how do I want to, to respond to this? I have to remind myself that I want to be in this moment in heaven, not hell. So when we forget, forget to direct this power that we have, this awesome power that we have to create our lives, when we forget to consciously direct that power, whatever beliefs are in our subconscious mind, our subjective mind, those take over and create, because we're not directing it. It's like when you go into a restaurant and you say, uh, I really don't know what I want, just bring me anything that's on the menu, and they bring you chopped liver. You know, you really don't like chopped liver, but you did not make a specific request on what you want. It's exactly the way the universe react, uh, is, is run. So, um, so it is our responsibility to remove the false beliefs and the things that are in our subconscious mind that have been there since we were born for years and years it's our responsibility to remove them. And how do we do that? We do that with meditation. We do that with, a, with affirmative prayer. We do that with affirmations, repeating, repeating, just like I, the quotes, the, rep, the repetitious. You know, I've told you a hundred times what mine is. I am open and receptive to the abundance that is mine to have and to share every morning, every night 
anytime I need it during the day, that's my affirmation. And I have others that I do uh, if I need them, you know. Um, God is all there is. I am safe. Uh, I am at peace. If I can't sleep at night, I kind of just say, you know, I am at peace. God lives within me. I am at peace. And I, it puts me right to sleep. So what exactly is the science of mind philosophy? <clears throat> Dr. Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of uh, the science of mind, who wrote the textbook in 1926, and he says that the science of mind is a spiritual, philosophical, and metaphysical religious movement within the new thought movement. In general, the term science of mind applies to the teaching, while the term religious science applies to the organization. And a little side here that I have heard the story that uh, Dr. Holmes never really wanted religious science to be a religion, so to speak. It's, he wrote the book and he wanted it to be an additive to the uh, fundamental uh, religions, all the faiths. He added it to as a philosophy to go along with it. And that did not happen. So, um, and he also had a, um, a, a, a small hosp a healing hospital. I think there was eight, 16 beds or something anyway. And he had his practitioners, the people he taught how to pray in the affirmative way, praying over these people. And, and they were, you know, they were healing. They were getting well. And so these people, these people that were, were working with him, they said, you really need to organize so we can teach this to other people because it, you know, the world needs to know this teaching, that the power that is in this, the power that's in with, within each one of us can be used by each one of us individually. So that's when they organized uh, what we, we used to be called religious science. You know, our name is this center's name is the First Church of Religious Science of San Clemente, doing business as the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley. But that's our, our real name. So, <clears throat> so in the science of mind, your word and thought have the power of law in the universe, insofar as it is aligned with the good. Insofar if it's aligned with the good. And the good is a capital G, which is the mind of God. So in a, if you're in alignment, it's all yours. It's all yours. So the pearl of the science of mind is the practice called spiritual mind treatment, which is affirmative prayer. That's already restating what you, what you want as if you already had it. And... Um, there are five steps to an affirmative prayer. There are recognition, unification, realization, thanksgiving, and release. So if some of you have gone to the tables uh, after um, on Sunday mornings and you've had a short treatment with the um, practitioners, they ask you first, what is the purpose of this prayer? What do you need? Do you need a healing? Do you want you know, a new job, a, a home, create a home? Uh, what, what do you want? So what is the purpose? So you, you, you establish that first. And then you go to the um, recognition. Now recognition is just what it says, recognizing God, spirit, first cause divine intelligence, unconditional love, kindness, recognizing that. You recognize what it is, and there are a million qualities of God. The second thing you do is you unify with that. So all those qualities of God are within each one of you. Every one of us, every spiritual being has all the qualities of God right here, right now within us. It's just like, well, I just read the quote from Rumi. Uh, you are not a drop in the ocean. The entire ocean is in the drop. 
So the entire universal presence of God is within each one of us. We have that power. So after we unify with all the qualities of God, who we are with that, then we do the realization, which is your affirmation. This is, and we realize it as if it's already happened. I have a beautiful home in Laguna Woods. It is everything I've ever wanted. It has three bathrooms and four bedrooms, and, and it's, it's the most perfect thing I've ever wanted. And you realize and you affirm and you decree what it is you want. You state it. Now, sometimes, kind of like the mirror work, when you're looking in the mirror and telling, I love you, it's hard to do sometimes. You know, it's, it's, well, that, and your, your monkey mind's going, well, that's a bunch of bull. You know, I, you know, this is not, this is not going to happen. And so that really takes it off the road. So you have to have the feeling of the belief and the passion behind the affirmation. You have to know what you're, you're speaking is the truth. That it is exactly what is going to happen. And you speak it as it already has happened. And then you give thanks for it. The fourth step is giving thanks. Thank you is the most powerful affirmation, the most powerful prayer that you could ever, ever deliver is thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, everyone is thank you. And then the release, which is the hardest one for me, the letting go. That's the one I have to constantly, constantly remind myself to do. Surrender. Let, let the prayer go. It's being taken care of. Let it go. And then we say, so it is. The science of mind, or religious science, is a new thought philosophy that honors all paths that lead to God and a better understanding of the way that the universe works. So Ernest Holm studied all the different religions and he saw this thread of truth through every single religion and he compiled all that knowledge and put it in the Science of Mind book. So a lot of people say, does, do, uh, does Science of Mind believe in God? Well, yes, of course. We believe in the concept of God, whatever. It's hard because when you say God, some people think of that other concept or, or um, thought of the man up in the sky. Uh, but God is divine intelligence. God is energy. God is love. And so a lot of people don't... I remember when I was, I was friends with Louise Hay, and she told me that when she was uh, training um, way back in the uh, 60s, they, her, her teacher told her, I don't want you to use the name God for anything. You use all the other... Names, you know, you use all the other uh, qualities like first cause, universal presence, uh, love, all that. It is because I want you to get the concept that it's not a, a thing. It is an energy and it can be called anything you want. I don't remember who it was that called God Big Sweetie. Helen Street. Helen Street. She got uh, uh, Big Sweetie. I love that one. <laughs> <clears throat> So, um, the, it, so he says that the name, Ernest Holmes says the name is not important for God is spirit, first cause, the creator of all that exists, the presence and principle that fills the whole universe, the substance of all form, life itself, that's what God is. God is infinite, eternal, and changeless. Everything changes except for this. We are constantly expanding, evolving, and growing. 
God is the constant. I think this is a good time to show that uh, video. This is a video of um, Dr. Ernest Holmes. This evening, I am going to talk to you about a power for good in the universe, greater than you are, greater than I am, greater than all of us. A power for good that we can use in everyday life for everything. When the greatest teacher who ever lived said, it is done unto you as you believe, what do you suppose he was talking about? Yeah. This master mind was talking about a spiritual power in the universe. Something so close to us that it is indeed nearer than our hands and feet, closer to us than our very neck vein, as the old Talmud said. And so this power is not something we have to go in search after. It is something that is right here, close, nearer than our very breath. How then would we use a power that is so intimate? Certainly we should have to use it in an intimate way. And we would certainly have to believe that the power exists, is for us, not against us. It is willing and not reluctant. We should actually have to believe that it really is done unto us as we believe, then we would have to believe. What is belief? Anyway, these are the things I want to discuss with you tonight, how it is that we could use this power for good, greater than we are, wonderful. The thing the whole world wants more than anything else in the world thing that you and I have for the taking, for the asking, for the using, power that responds to us, according to our conviction in it. Power that is used in our own mind, in our own thinking, right where we are. How close and how intimate such a power is. And how wonderful it is just to believe that we're going to learn how to use it. First of all, just what it is, then we're going to talk about how to use it. Then we are going to actually get right down and use it in our everyday life. First of all, the power that is bigger than you are and greater than I am is, of course, a spiritual power. Just what do we mean by a spiritual power? We mean something that is invisible, of course. We don't see it. We don't touch it. We don't taste it. We don't handle it. We don't weigh it. We don't measure it. But we do feel it. Just as you feel beauty. Just as you feel love just as you feel anything in life. This power greater than we are is a power for good. It responds to us if we have faith and confidence in it. Now throughout all the ages, people of course have prayed and their prayers have been answered. They have prayed with faith. It doesn't make any particular difference what kind of a religion they have had. That power has responded to everyone in the way he has used it. And that is why Jesus said, very simply, very directly, it is done unto you as you believe. Okay. Let us then analyze the... I love watching videos of him. He's a very... He was very short. He was a very powerful man. Very powerful. 
Reverend Dr. Arthur um, Chang is the senior minister at the Founders Church in uh, uh, Los Angeles, and he wrote this. Science means the way something works, and mind means God. Therefore, science of mind means that the way God works in the world. Since we are in love and creativity, made in the image of God, we will work best creating like God. God works through love, which uses thought to guide our faith-evoking creative power, which is the immutable law and mind in action. So how do we do it? How do we use the creative, how do we use the science of mind? Um, Jill, would you pa pass these out? Absolutely. Maybe something you can take home. It's through the creative process. And the creative process, I'm gonna go over just briefly because we don't have any time left. So when you are meditating or when you finally get that moment of quiet, that five minutes or that two minutes or however minutes you get of quiet, and you open your mind up and you get an idea. It's called the ideal. The ideal is always on the spiritual plane. So the ideal, an idea comes into your mind. And you think about it. And then you, then you use your intuition. It moves through your intuition into an idea. Oh, I have an idea. I want to create um, I want to create a home. I want to create a uh, whatever you want to create. I want to create a better life. I want to create a new job. I want to create a healthy body, whatever it is. So it goes from, your, from the intuition to the idea. And then you imagine it. You visualize it in your mind. You, you see it already built, you see it already done, you see yourself already perfect, you see yourself in the new job, you see yourself at peace, you have peace of mind. And then you have that inspiration within you. So that's the passion, that's, what, that's the flame that stirs you up. So then you go into action. There's a little saying that we have is treat, meaning do your spiritual mind treatment, do your prayer, treat and move your feet. I have people that have come to me and they say, I, I want a relationship, and yet they never go out of the house. So the only relationship they have is with their pet dog. So you have to treat and move your feet. You have to put, put your imagination, put your inspiration into action. And then after the action, you have the experience on the physical plane, the experience of what you've created from the ideal. So. It's our teaching symbol, it's the V. It's like you have on your, on your um, handout. So then you have your reaction to what you uh, have created. And if you have something that you've created and you don't like it, then you can do it again. You don't have to stay there. So you have a reaction and you get that feeling behind it. You wanna create something new, you start all over again. You don't have to stay with that. We are always, every single one of us is at choice every moment of every day. We choose what we want to bring forth. So you get the feeling, then you have cognition, and then you glean knowledge from what you created, and then you recognize it as a spiritual thing, and then it creates wisdom and that's what you hold on is to the after you've created, you have wisdom in your life. That is why I did this in the 90s, this um, creative process. And that is why this is called Winsty's Wisdom because of that uh, particular thing. How you always come back to that top part and that is always on the spiritual plane. <clears throat> so the ideal. Did you just flash the lights at me? You did. Okay. <laughs> All 
All right, you got it. I mean, you know, it's all here. And um, I'm sure because we learn by repetition that I'll be speaking about the creative process again, about affirmative prayer and the five steps we teach the kids. Are you, are you, are, are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? Recognition, unification, realization, thanksgiving, and release. Thank you. Wow. Yay. Thank you. I had about 10.